It's time for round two of what I have been erroneously calling my Fat Shark Diversity Module Shootout. I think I'm just going to call it the uh, FPV Receiver Shootout because I've got Fat Shark Diversity Modules, I've got ground stations. Uh, give me something else that's interesting, I'll put it in here too. In this round, I've got the Hobby King Overlord. I've got the two pineapples Fat Shark Diversity Module from Flying Lemon. I've got the Fat Shark Next Wave Diversity Module. And I've got a new five-way diversity receiver from Furious FPV that isn't even out yet. But they said it was okay if I tested it and showed you the results. So, yeah, of course, right? Let me remind you that for the diversity modules, I'm using the 8DBI Lumineer Mini Patch Antenna. It's a very popular one. A lot of people use it. And a 2DBI Fox Ear, quote-unquote, indestructible, the, 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 two B, the Fox Ear Cloverleaf antennas that have become popular lately. For the Overlord, the Overlord has 14 DBI antennas on them. And by the way, some people have said these Aomway patches, these are terrible. These are not the same terrible Aomway patches that Bruce from RC Model Reviews reviewed. And you can tell because the ones he reviewed have the wire coming out the bottom. And these, you can actually see it's the same casing. You can see where the wire would have come out. But the wire doesn't come out the bottom. It comes out the back. So this is actually a different antenna, and I have to say, I feel confident saying that the performance of these antennas is not terrible. It's not crap. So if there's an antenna, if there's an AOMWAY 14 dBi patch out there that's crap, I don't think this is it. And this is the Furious FPV 5-way diversity module, and uh, you can see I've got X-Air. Uh, these are 10 dBi antennas on there. Uh, I wanted to use a higher gain antenna, but they were out of stock. So these actually have about 120 degree beam width which means that with only three of them, you could cover a full circle. I wanted to have a, something closer to like a 90 degree beam width, so I could have four of them covering a whole circle and one of them sticking straight up in the air. Well, I, I wasn't able to get that. So these are 10 dBi, and I arranged them for the test in essentially like this, in a one, two, three, four in a quadrant, and then, oh, that's not quite right, but you get the picture. Yeah, like, there we go. One, two, three, four in a quadrant, and one of them sticking straight up in the air. So the idea was to cover a full 360 and straight up in the air above. With that all being said, I'm now going to toss to Joshua from the past. I'm going to remind you the nature of the test protocol, and then we'll get straight into the results. Here we are looking at a satellite image of my lovely home. And I do that because when I show you where I flew, when I show you the first person view of me flying, I want you to understand where I am. I am standing in the tests right here, okay? And I want you to know that I stood so that the patch antenna was facing right at the barn. And the reason I did that is because flying behind the barn is usually the area where I get the most breakup. If we zoom out a little bit, I also want to call your attention to this little area up here. During the flight test, you'll see that I fly into this area and I just do some circles for a little while. It's about 200 feet. And I just, and you've got these stand of trees here, so, and, and you've got the house. So you're going through the house, you're going through these trees. So there's quite a lot of obstruction, and this is probably one of the weakest areas I can possibly fly in uh, anywhere on the property. And that's, of course, why I picked it. I also did a test where I fly down, thanks to the magic of 3D, I can show you. Isn't that freaking cool? I fly down into this area here, this excavated sort of dugout area. And I do that because this is a, a, a concrete retaining wall. And if I fly down into this corner here, you can see that if I'm standing right here, that's a really bad area for RF reception. And maybe I'm getting a, a reflected signal off of this wall. Who knows? But if I'm standing here and I'm just tucked my copter down into this area here, it's that if you can get a signal there, that really says something. So here's how I'm going to present the data to you. I've got all the original videos from the first round of testing, and I've got them side by side with the new videos. And not only that, but I have as carefully as I can synced them up. The one that is missing is the next wave, the non-diversity basic next wave module. And the reason that one's missing is that it wasn't easy for me to get nine on the screen as easy as it could get eight. If to get nine on, I would have had to shrunk them down much smaller. I didn't like it, so I just left that one out. One more thing that is critical for you to understand is that these devices are not all using the same gain of antenna. All of the Fat Shark diversity modules are using a 2 dBi antenna for almost all of the testing, except when we're flying behind the barn, and that's where they will roam our diversity switch onto the 8 dBi patch. 
the Furious and the Overlord are using their higher gain antennas 100% of the time. So if the Furious and the Overlord don't really just absolutely kick butt over the others, then well, draw your own conclusions. And then the other thing that I did is I went and I stood by my mailbox. I use that as my sort of reference point. So I stand in the same place every time. I stood by my mailbox and I flew down this road, all the way down this road to the very end of the road this way. And then I turned around and I flew back. And that's about 650 feet or just under 200 meters. I checked that one. I had the antenna, the, the, the directional antenna, the patch antenna, aimed down the street, and I was very, very careful not to move my head during that testing. So I kept the antenna pointed in that direction. And uh, then what I did as I flew back was I continued to fly past myself, and I flew up the street this way. And of course, since I'm behind myself, now I will diversity switch over to the cloverleaf antenna because the directional antenna is going to be very weak in that direction. So I did not turn and face that direction. That would just be repeating the same test. So then I flew as far as I could behind myself up this direction. And this is a little more challenging. You can see that if I'm standing here, as I go around this way, we get some trees in the way here. And then if I get past this turn in the road, there's definitely some trees in this way. So just see how far I could get that way before the video broke up. As you go into this test, I want you to know, in case you don't already know, that 6 dB of gain equates to a doubling or halving of range. So the clear view with a 2 dBi antenna compared to the LaForge with an 8 dBi antenna, the clear view should get half the range if all else was equal. If the clear view gets the same range as an 8 dBi antenna, it's actually doing twice as well. And the difference between the clear view and the Overlord is uh, 12 dB. That is four times the range. So if the clear view does the same as the Overlord, it's doing four times as well. I want to point out to you here that YouTube's video compression is absolutely destroying the image quality of the bottom row of images. These were all shot using the Runcam Eagle, which has a, a wide dynamic range, but it's also a lower contrast image. Also, it's winter now. It's a cloudy day. It's not a lot of sunlight, so it's a low contrast day just to begin with. And that lack of contrast means that YouTube's uh, compression is just turning it into a muddy, blocky mess. I have uploaded this video in 4K. If you want to see a slightly better version, uh, you can switch to 4K right now. Uh, but suffice it to say, focus on the amount of breakup and glitching, and don't, don't let the fact that the video looks like a muddy, blocky mess uh, dissuade you. That's just YouTube ruining it. The signal gets much worse here where I've turned around because the antenna is behind the copter.
Now here's the second half of the testing. Bear in mind that all of the diversity modules are now onto their clover leaves and are only having 2 dBi of gain, whereas again, the Furious and the Overlord have the full high gain antennas. So we would expect the Furious and the Overlord to significantly beat the other modules. And if they don't, draw your own conclusions. And because it's probably not obvious to you just by watching the footage uh, how far each one got, I've made this little map for you. I do want to warn you, though, the decision of when to turn around when the signal was too bad was entirely subjective. So don't take this too seriously, but, you know, take it a little bit seriously. So here's where I was standing. Just as a reminder, my mailbox is right here. And... The first one to give out was the Next Wave Diversity Module, followed by the Furious FBV Fat Shark Module V1. By the way, this was the V1 module. This was several months ago that I tested it. I have not tested the V2 module. Uh, I don't think the performance is likely to change significantly. Uh, the diversity switching may get a little better, but the, the, the absolute range I don't think is going to significantly change. The real ACC actually beat the LaForge a little bit in this uh, specific test. You real ACC people can crow a little bit about that. They were pretty close, though. Then we had the two pineapples and the overlord, which were basically neck and neck. And finally, the clear view. And strangely, the furious five-way uh, diversity receiver. And the reason I say strangely is not because there's anything wrong with the furious five-way. Just it didn't do exceptionally well in any of the other tests. And it had a slightly lower gain antenna than the overlord. So it's kind of weird that I got that much further on the Furious 5-way, but hey, there you go. It is what it is. Oh, and let me hit this point just one more time. The Clearview won this test with a little 2 dBi cloverleaf antenna on it compared to the two, uh, Overlord and the Furious 5-way, which had a 14 dBi and a 10 dBi antenna. So it hit it with a massive, massive handicap, and it still matched or beat the performance of them and it more than doubled the performance of all the others. I say more than doubled. That's not quite true, because this is not a clear line of sight, so the attenuation of the trees and stuff is going to vary. But just thinking purely in terms of the distance here, it certainly got about twice the distance as all the others w w in a fair fight. All these guys had 2 dB antennas, right? So that's a fair fight between the clear view and the, these guys, and it beat them. And I don't know how, but it, it whooped the Overlord with 14 dBi antennas on there. So whatever the clear view is doing on the inside, uh, it's magic. <laughs> and that's going to bring us to the end of this test. And I'm torn as to what conclusions I should give you because I want to tell you what I thought and any insights that I had. But at the same time, I was surprised during the first round of testing how different some people's conclusions were to mine. So I'm going to try and focus on the things that I think are, are really a strong conclusion, but let you draw your own conclusion on the fine points. You've got the data. You can, you can see for yourself. The RF performance of the two pineapples module is exceptional. Uh, I feel confident saying that it has the best RF performance of any of the Fat Shark modules. If you didn't care about the usability issues that I complained about in my review of the module, that would be the one to pick. Unfortunately, the two pineapples module is very, very hard to actually find in stock anywhere and get a hold of. If you want one, uh, the best approach is to put yourself on the waiting list and then just wait. <laughs> and then someday you'll get an email that says they're in stock. And if you catch the email within like three minutes of getting it, you can get one. <laughs> so you may find it kind of hard to get one. I continue to be impressed with the performance of the clear view. Uh, I wish that the Clearview was a module that fit into my goggles. I'm told by Iftron Tech that there is no possible way that that will ever happen. The technology involved is just too bulky to fit into goggles. So I, I hate setting up a ground station sometimes, but the RF performance of the Clearview is so good that it's, it's often worth it. And it's interesting to me that the Clearview got so much further than the others when, I mean, the RF performance can't be that much better, can it? And I think part of that is due to the predictable and graceful way that the Clearview degrades. Whereas the other units will have these huge full screen glitches that can really disrupt your ability to fly, 
with the clear view, the signal degrades in a very flyable way that lets you keep going. And so you can imagine a scenario where on average, the clear view's picture was worse. Compared to the other module, the other module might be pretty good most of the time. But then occasionally, the other module will just have a terrible glitch that would cause you to crash. Whereas the clear view is consistently a little bit worse, but because it's consistent, you can fly through it. The performance of the Overlord uh, is at the same time uh, pleasing and disappointing. It's pleasing because it is definitely better most of the time than the modules, the goggle modules. And I say that not just based on these results, which I've looked at these results again and again and again as I've been editing and studying and thinking about my conclusions, but just also in my subjective experience of flying it. The, the Overlord is better than the modules, and gosh, it, it darn well ought to be. The modules are working with a 2 dBi or an 8 dBi antenna, and the Overlord has 14 dBi antennas. It better be better. But as I said in my review of the Overlord, the diversity switching sometimes really lets you down or lets me down. There, it is possible to adjust the diversity switching parameters on the Overlord, so maybe that's something that could be fixed. I haven't looked into that. As far as what didn't do well, the next wave diversity module did terribly. And I, I don't think that's, I think you're going to agree with me when you see that. I don't think anybody's going to be down in the comments going, no, it was fantastic. No, it did terribly. And I, I will tell you that my subjective experience of flying it backs that up. I don't, I don't want to fly it now that this testing is done. I'm never putting it back in my goggles again. I can't tell if my experience of, of flying FPV has been tainted by the fact that I've been flying with higher end modules for a long time now. But even when I was using the non-diversity next wave module, I don't remember seeing some of the glitches in some of the areas where I'm getting like full screen rolling glitches on just, uh, just uh, on, I don't remember seeing that stuff on my regular non-diversity module. So if anything, it almost feels like the next wave diversity module is worse than the next wave non-diversity module. It would be interesting to do a little bit of a head to head and see if that's actually true but I will probably never look at this module again, and so who cares? <laughs> the other one that I think did poorly in the test, and I don't think it's gonna be very controversial, uh, was the Furious uh, module, the Furious FPV module, not the five-way diversity. Uh, it seems to show earlier breakup and worse breakup and didn't have spectacular range in the range testing. Uh, this is disappointing. Uh, the usability is decent, and it comes in at an okay price point. You can go back and watch the conclusions to my first round of testing if you want to hear more about how it stacks up to some of these other modules. For me, I, I still feel like I'm going to be keeping the Forge in my goggles for the time being. Uh, its RF range is not at the absolute top of the top of the class. Uh, the two pineapples beat it, and the real ACC matched it at about half the price. But I still feel like the usability features of the Forge for me make it the one I want to keep. But that's easy for me to say. I didn't have to buy it. And if you're out there with $50 in your pocket and thinking about whether to spend $100 plus on a LaForge versus $50-ish on a real ACC, maybe the favorites channel set is not that big a deal to you. And the RF performance of the real ACC certainly does stack up, especially if you put some of the, uh, the, the firmwares on it that improve the diversity switching, and then it, the performance can get pretty good. All right, folks, that is going to be the end of this video and the end of diversity module and FPV receiver testing for a while. I'm going to go do something else um, for a while. Uh, maybe I'm going to test some batteries. I am going to keep some of this stuff around. I'm going to keep the Overlord and keep the Furious diversity and the, keep the clear view, of course. Uh, and, and you'll see stuff from them at various times. And if I find any other interesting conclusions, I'll definitely show them to you again. I also have a few more videos that I'm going to be putting up. The raw videos from this testing will be going up and a few other head-to-head -head videos that I think you might find interesting. Hope this has all been educational. It helped you make whatever buying decision uh, you want to make or entertained you. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.